Hi, it's AJ, and welcome to part two of the Tony and Frank video. Actually, it's three people. Tony Robbins, Frank Kern, and John Reese. So in part two, we watched part one. Part one was the introduction by Tony Robbins. Now in part two, we see that Frank Kern and John Reese are driving to a hotel to meet with Tony Robbins. So first we find them in their car. They're in the car and they call Tony Robbins on the phone. They have a, you know, wireless phone. So let's watch. We got the dialing. Frank. <laughs> Tony, what's up? Okay, so you can see this is such a common way to say hello, especially in America. What's up? Hey, Tony, what's up? Hey, Tony, what's up? Right? They, not, it's not just hello. How are you? Now it's most common we say what's up. I say this with my friends. I call them on the phone. I say, hey, what's up? Hey is, means hi. And what's up means how are you or what are you doing? So I will say, hey, what's up? Or what are you doing? Another greeting is what you doing? What you doing means what are you doing? What are you doing? But if we make it very fast and short, we say, what you doing? What you doing? What's up? They're all just greetings. So Frank says, hey, Tony, what's up? <laughs> good thing, man. How about you? I'm good. Listen, we, we got a, uh, we've got a serious issue um, that I think is affecting our market. And okay, so they say, you know, how are you? And Frank Kern says, I'm good. Then he says, we have a serious issue that is facing our market. Now, issue means problem. So we have a serious problem that's facing our market. It means that's uh, hitting our market or that is in our market. And these guys, they're, they're internet marketers. They are, they are internet business people. So they're saying our customers, what they mean is our customers have a serious problem. And we need your help, Tony. And we need your help. We actually don't know if we can solve this problem, but we think that you can. So we don't know if we can solve this problem, but we think you can. He's talking to Tony Robbins. So he's saying, you know, Frank Kern is saying, I don't think I can solve this problem. And John Reese, who's also a very big, famous uh, internet businessman, He's saying he can't solve the problem, but they think Tony Robbins can. So they want to come and talk to Tony. So we want to, we want to barge in today. We're kind of riding around anyway. So, so he's saying we want to barge in. We are kind of riding around anyway. To barge in. This is a common phrase. To barge in means to uh, visit someone, but it has this idea that you are interrupting them. Right? Tony is right now, Tony's working. He's at a hotel. They're making videos for his business. And Frank and John, they're going to interrupt him. They're going to barge in. To barge in means to come in suddenly. Right? To suddenly come in somewhere. And it has this idea that you are interrupting a little bit, that there, you didn't plan to come. They're, the person is not expecting you. You just suddenly come to their house and you come in. That's what to barge in means. So they're saying, we want to come barge into your hotel. We want to suddenly just come to your hotel and uh, interrupt you and talk to you. I know you're shooting and stuff, but... We know you're shooting and stuff. Shooting means, uh, to shoot means to film video, right? They're making videos. So we say to shoot videos, or sometimes we say to shoot photos. It just means take a video, take a photo. And he says, and stuff, it just means and other things. You're, you're shooting a video and stuff. You're making a video and you're doing other things. So he's saying, we know you're busy now, but we want to barge in. We want to interrupt you. If you got a couple minutes so we can pop by, that sure would be helpful. Okay, so he said, if you have a couple minutes and we can pop by, that would be helpful. Frank Kern's great because he has a very casual way of speaking. So you hear a lot of idioms when you hear Frank. He says, I hope we can pop by. To pop by, also it has an idea of to quickly visit someone. 
again, it's the idea, it's spontaneous. There's no plan, right? There was no schedule. They didn't have a plan to visit Tony this day. They want to pop by. That means they want to visit him quickly. Just suddenly come over and visit him. Spontaneous, no plan, very quick. Okay, well, I'm honored if I'm to help me. Come on over, I'm to see you. Okay, it's hard to hear Tony here in the, in the phone, but he says, um, I'm honored. It means I'm, I would be happy to have you. Come on over. Come over. Okay. See you, man. Right, man. Bye. 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 Yep. Bye. See ya. Okay, see you. Goodbye. So why are we in a hotel anyways? They- okay, so he's, see you. Obviously, that's a good, that's the way we say goodbye a lot. And then John, John here is saying, why are we in a hotel anyways? He's asking Frank, you know, why don't we go to Tony's house? And Frank tells him, well, Tony likes to shoot videos in a very nice hotel because the hotel looks very nice. So they make their videos in a hotel sometimes. Maybe I should try that. We have a better background than this. You use this place a lot to shoot stuff because it's got a really nice background. Got a nice background. Oh, it's really nice outdoor Filming stuff. different guests and interviews yeah. and TV commercials. Hey, man. How's it going? Okay, so then he knocks on the door to where Tony Robbins is. Another guy answers the phone. He says, hey, man, what's up? How's it going? Okay, how's it going means how is it going? How's it going is another greeting. How's it going? What's up? What you doing? How are you? Same meaning. We use questions a lot in English uh, for greetings. And you, you, you can give a short answer. You don't need to have a big, long answer. Just say, fine, okay. You know, something like that. And then uh, you also notice that Frank Kern says, Hey, man. Hey, man. How's it going? Now, this is a very common, very, very casual phrase. And it, it doesn't have really much meaning. But it gives a casual feeling to a conversation. When you say, Hey, man. How's it going? It shows that you're being very casual. This is not formal business. If I go to a, to a bank, for example, and I want to get money, I will not say, hey, man, how's it going? It's too casual. That's what I say to my friends or to somebody that it's a casual relationship. At a bank, I would say, hey, hi, how are you? Nice to meet you. But in a casual greeting, you might say, hey, man, what's up? How's it going? Frank Kern is super casual. He's a multimillionaire, super rich guy. He, he, he's probably one of the most famous internet business people in the world. He made, I can't remember, $24 million in one day. <laughs> he's very good. But he's funny. He's a funny guy. He's super funny. I saw him speak recently at a seminar, and he's so funny. He's like a comedian. Um, and he's a very, very relaxed, casual guy. So his speech is very, very casual. So let's keep going. How's it going? Hey, man, how's it going? All right. Thank you. Hey, hey Tony. What's up? How you doing, man? What's up? Okay, so you hear again these casual greetings that we use with friends or with casual situations. Hey, man, how's it going? What's up? Just casual way to say hello. What's all this? <laughs> doing a little leadership film now. That's all. And then Frank says, what's all this? It means they have these lights. He's like, what's all this? What's happening? And Tony says, we're doing a leadership film. They're making a film about leadership. Awesome. Good to see you. All right. Thanks for having us, man. Yeah, yeah, you're good. Awesome. Great. Thanks for having us, man. Thanks for having us, man, means thanks for having us come over to your place. Just He's just thanking him. Thank you for letting us come over. Well, come on in. I'm, I'm curious to what this major problem is. <laughs> It says, come on in, come in, come on in. It also means come in, same meaning. He says, I'm curious what this major problem is. Now, you notice too, they give each other hugs. So this is a common thing in uh, America with friends, with people who know each other that will we'll give each other a hug. Uh, I, I'll give my friends a hug, my good friends, like my friend Todd, my friend Kristen. Uh, I will hug them. If I don't know somebody well, then, you know, if it's more formal again, of course, we shake hands. <laughs> you you got to see me right away about it. This sounds like a setup to me. It's man. a setup, yeah. <laughs> he's saying that, he says, I'm curious about what you need to see me right away about. Right away means immediately. 
And then Tony says, it sounds like a setup. He's laughing. A setup means it's like, uh, like they planned it a little bit. Like they're pretending that this is spontaneous. They're pretending there's no plan, but actually they had a plan. Actually, they planned to call Tony and they wanted to come over with the camera and do this film. So Tony's joking. He says, sounds like a setup. It means sounds like you are kind of joking with me a little. Yeah, I told I told John it was an intervention to, about his glue sniffing problem. So. <laughs> well, come over and sit on my lap. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, so then Frank is joking now, and he says I, he says uh, it's, um, I told John it's a uh, it's an intervention about his glue sniffing habit. Okay, so he's joking. Um, glue sniffing, you guys, you know glue, right? You put sticks two things together. Well, some people, some crazy people actually, um, will put the glue in a bag, uh, it, it like very powerful glue, chemical glue, and they will, they sniff it, and it makes them feel kind of high, uh, right? It's also really, really terrible because it destroys their brain. It's one of the worst drugs, actually, glue sniffing. Um, so... Frank Kern is joking about his friend John. He said, it's an intervention about his glue-sniffing habit. So habit means addiction. So uh, an, an intervention, an intervention is, it means uh, sometimes if someone has a drug problem, for example, in a, in a family, people will try an intervention. What is that? It means everybody in the family will get together at the same time with that person and they will all try to convince the person to stop using drugs. The moms, the dad, brothers, sisters, friends, cousins, aunts, uncles, bosses, everybody comes in a room at the same time and they talk very strongly to the drug addict and they say, you must stop, you must stop. We call that an intervention. So, what is Frank joking about? He's joking. He's saying John has a glue sniffing problem. He's a glue addict. And he's bringing him to Tony Robbins to help him with this problem. So they're just joking. So, you know, friends joke about this, especially men will joke like this sometimes. And then Tony says, sit on my lap, sit on my legs, and I will help you, John, and help your drug problem. So they're just joking. None of this is serious. <laughs> so we were doing some talking and the big problem in our industry we think is a bit of a mystery no one has the exact answer we were actually talking about trying to f so he's saying we were doing some talking it means frank and john were talking together and he said there's a big mystery there's a big question something in our industry their industry is again internet business so they're having some problem and they want to talk to Tony about this problem because they want Tony to help. Tony's an expert in psychology, right, and motivation. So this is the problem they will they will discuss. And you can see that John Reese is a more serious guy, right? Like Frank Kern, super casual, joking all the time. Tony is uh, he's a little funny too, um, but John Reese he's, he's kind of a serious guy. Figure it out that you know so many people in our market get these courses that you know him and I both for our own respective businesses spend. So he's saying, so many people in our market, so many internet business people, get our courses. These guys make courses. They, they have uh, classes and courses about how to make a successful internet business. And what he's saying and what he's going to say is that people get their courses. They buy these courses. And they're great courses. I have one of Frank Kern's courses. Very, very good. But he's saying the problem is... Many people, most people, in fact, buy the courses, they get these, this great information, but then they don't use it, right? They, they have the tools, they have the information, but then they don't do anything. They just, it just sits there. They don't watch it. They don't use it. So now Frank and John are, sa are asking Tony, what can we do? How can we help people take action? All right, let's keep going hours and hours of time, you know, recording these, um, 
you know, we building spend these, hours these education of time. products, these training products to show people how to grow a business or build a business. But so he's saying we spend a lot of time recording these courses, making these products to help people learn how to grow a business. So he's saying we spend a lot of time and we work hard to make these courses, but then a lot of people, the majority, most, don't actually use them. There's this large segment of our customers and our... There's a large segment, a large group of our customers... ...our market that we're in that really don't get results. So you're saying there's a large group, a large group of our market, again, our market means our customers, that don't get results. They don't succeed. And the reason is they don't really use it. They don't do anything. Or they don't do anything. Or they're just, you know, for whatever reason, it's not for them. It's just... So it's just for whatever reason, it's not for them. Maybe the course is not good for them. You know, we were just talking about how great it would be if there were just, you know, so many more success stories, right? Like so he's saying they were talking to each other, saying it would be great if there were more success stories. They want more people to succeed with Internet businesses. They really want to help people. If, if everyone who actually bought stuff... Not, not necessarily just our stuff, but all of the stuff within our community. If the people who bought it, if everyone who bought it just actually used it, you know, and just followed the direct. So Frank is saying, you know, if everybody who bought these courses, their courses and also other people's internet business courses, he says, if they, if everybody who bought them actually used it, so many people would be successful. So he's saying it's, it's terrible because, so let's say, a thousand people or ten thousand people buy these products, but then maybe only ten or twenty actually use the products and step by step do everything. And they succeed, they have great success. But the other people, the thousands of other people, they get the products, and they get the classes, they put them on their desk and they never watch them, or they watch them but they never do it. And so they're, they're frustrated. They're just like, we want more people to succeed. ...and followed through. How amazing that would be, like what we would accomplish as a community. So you think it'd be amazing if everyone followed through, if everyone took action. Oh, if that happened. So our challenge is, what, what needs to happen, what kind of shifts need to happen to get people to follow through? So he's saying our challenge, meaning our problem. Our problem is to find out how to shift people now, to shift means to change in this, in this uh, situation. They're saying, how can we get people to shift? It means make a change so that they actually follow through. They actually take action and succeed. To get people to actually use the products. So he says, we want people to actually use the products. So these guys, they're very good at selling the products. They made these great courses for building an internet business. They teach you how to do it. And they also do a good job. They sell a lot of these courses. They make a lot of money. These guys are multi-millionaires, very, very rich guys, very, very successful. So he's saying we, we, we're good at making the products and the classes, and they're great classes. He says we're good at selling them. But the problem now is we want people to use them. We're not so good at making people use them. So he's talking about motivation. I have a similar problem sometimes with my English lessons. I feel that my English lessons are fantastic and powerful. Uh, I'm a good business person, so I sell a lot of them. But then I know that there's a large number of people who get my lessons and don't use them every day. The people who use them every day, the people who follow my system, they succeed. Go to our member forums. You can read all the great success stories. They're so happy. Look on the comments on my blog, all these great success stories. So happy people. I feel great. I love that. But then I also, I think about what about the people who aren't doing it? What about the people who get my lessons? They spend this money and they get my lessons, but then they don't actually use them every day. So I'm like them. I'm like, wow, I want to motivate them. So right, this is not a problem with the course. It's a motivation problem. It's a psychology problem. And it's the problem they have also. That's why they're asking Tony Robbins, because Tony Robbins is a master of psychology, a master of motivation. So they're saying, Tony, help us. How can we help our customers succeed more and be more motivated? You're talking about the same mystery that people have of, you know, why does somebody, you know, get that fat or they're out of control and they hate themselves, but then they go have another piece of chocolate. So he's saying, Tony's saying, you're, ha you're talking about a problem that is, a big problem in all of life. It's not just these products. It's not just them. 
And he says, for example, why does somebody get fat? Fat, fat, fat. And they know they're fat and they don't want to be fat. But still, they will go eat more chocolate. They will eat more food. They don't, they want to be thin, but then they do actions that are making them fat. So Tony's saying, so why? What's the, this is a, a big problem in life, all of life. Or, you know, why does the person who's just, the doctor just told me they have cancer, lung cancer, and says, you've got to stop smoking. And some studies show 70% of the people keep on smoking. So Tony's saying another example, another motivation problem. For example, someone goes to a doctor. The doctor says, you have lung cancer, <sighs> right? Lung breathing cancer. And the doctor says, you must stop smoking. <sighs> stop or you will die. And Tony says there's some study, some research that shows 70%, seven zero, will continue to smoke even after the doctor says you must stop, even though they know they will die if they don't stop. Still, they will continue to smoke. So Tony's saying, why? Why do people do these crazy things that are hurting them? Why do people buy this great product to, to build a business and have great success in their life, but then they don't use it? Why does a fat person keep eating too much food? Why does a smoker who's going to die continue to smoke? It's an important question. So you're not talking about a minor issue here, right? It's He's saying you're not talking about a minor issue. This is not small. This is a big, big problem, a big issue. Part of life. It's but part of life. there is an answer because there are people that do follow through. And there are people that never did before and then they've never followed through in their life. And now finally they break through. So Tony says, here's the good news. There is an answer because... We also have good examples. There are people in life who have these problems for a long time and suddenly they do something. They follow through, they take action. So for example, we do, we know that there are fat people who are fat for a long time and something changes in their mind and they change and they stop eating that food and they exercise, they get thin and they get healthy. We know that there are some people, the other 30%, who get lung cancer and they decide no more smoking, they throw away the cigarettes, they stop smoking, they become healthy, they live a long life. So we know there are also success stories. And that's what I try to focus on is what those people do. So Tony says, I focus on the success stories. He says, I study the people who succeed. I study them and I try to find out and try to see what do they do? How are they different? We want to know this because we want to do what they are doing, right? It's like with my English lessons. Don't focus on the people who are failing. We want to focus on the success stories, the, the great super members we have, Jan and Inca and Fred and Vipper and, and, and Laura and all these incredible members. If you want to speak great, wonderful English and you want to have great success, you know, look at what like uh, Agnes is doing, look at what Inca's doing, look at what Jan's doing and Fred and Vipper, all these great members on the forums. Focus on them. How are they studying? What is their psychology? How do they think about it? What is their attitude? How do they use their emotions? If you do what they do, you will get the same result. So that's what Tony's saying. Focus on successful people, copy their strategies copy their psychology, copy their thinking, copy their methods. You know, in my case, in the business world, I look at people like you, people like Dan Kennedy. Yeah. What do these guys do? Okay, I'm just going to do that to the best of my ability. Okay, so, and then Frank Kern said, this is how I succeeded. This is how I became super, super rich. He says, I looked in the business world. I looked at people who were very successful. So he says, I looked at you, Tony. Tony's super successful business person. He said, I looked at another person named Dan Kennedy. You probably don't know Dan Kennedy, but he's a very famous internet business person also. So Frank said, when I was poor, when I was not successful, I decided I will look at these successful people. I will look at Tony. I will look at Dan Kennedy. And I will look, you know, what are they doing? What are their strategies? How are they thinking? And I will do the same thing. That's what Frank did, and that's how he became rich and successful. And I'm going to do one more part, and then that'll be the end of part two today. And sure, you know, it's like, well, oh, no, I can't write copy as well as Dan Kennedy. Or I don't have as much energy and drive as Tony Robbins. Well, but you so like, what? You yeah. Okay, so, 
So Frank said, um, you know, I looked at them and I realized I don't have as much energy as Tony Robbins. I'm not Tony Robbins. And I can't write copy like Dan Kennedy. Now, in advertising, when we say copy, we use it as a noun. Copy just means text. It means advertising text. So if you see an advertisement, the words in the advertisement, we call that copy. So we say to write copy means to write advertising words, to write advertising text. So it's a noun. It's a very special use of the word copy. You know, normally copy is a verb and it means to do what someone else is doing. But here, in this situation, the word copy is a noun and it means advertising words. So Frank said, I couldn't write as good as Dan Kennedy. Dan Kennedy is a great writer. I didn't have as much energy as Tony Robbins. But, he said, I still copied their methods, copied their strategies. And even though I was not as good as them, I still got a lot of success. You don't need to be perfect. If you want to be a great golfer, who should you copy? Somebody who's terrible? Of course not. Tiger Woods. Copy Tiger Woods. Maybe you will never be Tiger Woods. Probably not. But if you copy Tiger Woods, you will certainly improve a lot. You will certainly become a much, much, much better golfer. That's what Frank is saying. And I'm going to stop the video right here. And part three will come back and I'll start with Tony talking. So I hope you're enjoying these videos. Um, and this is called the movie technique. What I'm doing right now is called the movie technique where I play a movie and I just play one or two sentences and then I stop, I pause, and I explain it in simple, slower, more direct English. I paraphrase it. And then I play the next little part and I pause and I explain that again in more simple, slow, easy English. And then I go to the next scene and the next scene. What you should do is you should go back, you should watch my video, this one I'm doing now. You should watch it several times, maybe two times every day for one week, for seven days. After that, or maybe every day also, watch the original video with Tony and Frank and John without me, just the, the original normal video. You can also watch that at full speed. But just the, just the first two parts. Don't watch the rest of it. Just deep learning, remember, in Effortless English. So, number one, watch this video with me explaining everything. Do that maybe two times a day. And then also maybe one or two times a day, you can watch the original video with Tony and them at full speed. And by doing this, you are learning all of this English in the video very deeply. This is a powerful, powerful, powerful method for learning and improving your English speaking and listening. So I will do more of these. And in fact, I am planning a new VIP member program. And each month I will make a new video lesson like this. And each month my VIP members will get that video lesson plus also another audio lesson set. So that's going to be part of the whole VIP member package. So I'll tell you more about that later. Meanwhile, enjoy part one and part two of the Tony and Frank videos. And I'll see you again. Have a great day. I'm so happy to teach you. I really, I love teaching you because our members are so great. You guys rock and so do the, our fans. Thank you for all your wonderful, so nice, friendly comments on the uh, EffortlessEnglishClub.com blog and also on Facebook and also on the forum. So I love you guys. Big hug from me. And I'll see you again. Bye-bye.